Hello friends, welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET MVC5. In this video, we are going to study the practical demonstration of whatever we have studied from video 19 to video 46. Okay. Before this also, we have covered one practical demonstration and it covers the concept related to video 1 to video 17. So again, we are going to modify the same example. So if you are not aware with that example, please watch the video 18. Okay. Now, let us see what we are going to apply here. We are going to define the view models. So, specifically I wrote a view model because here our models are going to represent the data that our view is going to be used. That is why I will call it as a view model. Then, to design our view, we are going to use bootstrap framework. We are going to use strongly type HTML helpers and URL helpers to generate HTML tag, tags. Then after we are going to perform the model validation using data annotation or validation attribute technique. Then we are going to perform model binding. So model binding is used to convert your HTTP request value in our object or in our model. So basically my focus is to cover the complex model binding and then after we will see a small application of jQuery. Okay? So let us see the example that we are going to cover. See, we are first of all going to allow the user to log in. Then after we are validating the credentials. If credentials are valid, then we are going to display the username on each view. After that, we are going to accept the personal details. Again, we are validating the personal details against the blank data. If personal details are valid, then student marks will be accepted. It is again validated against the back, uh, blank data. And if mark details are valid, then we are calculating the total percentage and grade. And then after, we are displaying that data. Okay? So let us see this example practically. Okay, let me switch to Visual Studio. So as you can see, we already saw this example, but we used very traditional techniques there. Okay, We did not use the concept of model binding, we did not use a strongly type HTML helper, we did not use strongly type view also. So let us see the execution of this code and then after we will alter the changes. So here, if I do not enter anything, see, it shows you invalid. Suppose I enter the wrong in username and password, then also it shows the invalid. Basically, what we want to show, we want to show the error message along with our text boxes. Okay. Now, let me enter the valid username, which is admin. Then after password, that is 1 to 5. So, let us say login. See, now username and password is valid. So, it will redirect to the next screen. Now, here you have to enter your name. See, here just one validation is checked that is please enter all information. Okay. So, again we want to show the error message along with our text boxes. Hmm? Then we want immediate validation feedback. That is why we are going to use client side validation. Now, here again it, it is accepting any number of digit contact number. Okay. So basically it should be 10 digit only. So we want to put that validation also. Now here you will enter the theory marks. Here also we want to put a validation. And then after we want to display the result in a table. And to this table we are going to apply the bootstrap classes. Even whatever form that you saw. Okay, here also we are going to display, sorry, we are going to apply the bootstrap classes. Okay, so first of all, what we are going to do, see, let us observe the code first. What code we have written? See, we have an account controller and we have a student controller. Okay, in account controller, there is login method and that login method, post login method accepting a data in a traditional way. It is accepting a data using form collection. Even in a student controller, you can say, you can see that the personal post method is accepting a data using primitive model binding. 
okay this is called as primitive model binding so here what we did we kept our html element name and our action method parameters name same okay and we are collecting a individual data okay so this is called as primitive model binding so instead of this we are going to use a complex model binding we are going to wrap this data in one model and then we are going to accept the entire model okay now look at the validation technique what we did here we write a code directly here okay and then after we display the error message using view back okay so here basically all the validation will be done by validation attribute technique okay which is one of the data annotation we are going to display the error message using validation message for helper and as well as using validation summary okay now if you observe the views look at here look at the login view here also we use plain html tag so instead of that what we are going to use we are going to use html helpers and basically we will go for strongly type html helpers okay now here if you look at here the error message is displayed in span tag so instead of that as i told you we are going to show validation validation message for helper and validation summary helper again if you check the student controller view it is also designed using plain html tag okay so let us start with the first step what we are going to do we are going to define our view models first as you can see there are no models in our solution so let us define our view models so let me stop this so add class and let us design login view model okay now in this login view model i will define the required property first one is username and second one is password okay now at the same time i will apply the validation attribute so for validation attribute i have to import system dot component model dot data annotation namespace okay so these two fields are compulsory so i'll apply the required validation attribute and i'll specify the error message also so username is blank in the same way i'll specify the required attribute for password also error message is equal to password is blank if you want to specify the uh, character limit in that case you can use string length attribute also so suppose i want to set it for username so minimum maximum it can have a 10 characters okay and minimum it should have a five characters and then after i'll specify the error message also so error message is what username is too long okay so sorry error message is equal to it is not enclosed in a round bracket okay so in the same way we have to create a view model that will hold the personal details and the view model that will store the marks detail okay so i'll create it and then i'll show you so as you can see here i created personal view model and as well as i applied the annotations also validation annotations also so for name i added required annotation for address also i added required annotation and for contact along with the required annotation i add regular expression also because it should accept a 10 digit only and for 10 digit we have to use slash d slash d stands for digit and 10 stands for 
exactly 10 numbers of characters we want or exactly 10 digits we want and anchor these two anchors that is caret sign and dollar means what it should start with a number and end with a number and similarly I created a marks view model also there also I put a required attribute and I specified a regular expression okay and for marks I specified the regular expression for number and here you can see there is in curly bracket I specified 1 comma 3 means at least one digit and at the most you can enter three digits okay I hope this part is covered okay uh, sorry I hope this part is cleared now what we will do we will design our view using bootstrap okay we will apply the bootstrap classes and as well as we are going to use strongly type HTML helpers now for strongly type HTML helpers your view should be strongly type view and for that what we have to do we have to do the model declaration here and for that we have to add this namespace see practical demo dot models okay all the models are present in practical demo dot models even this also so here what I have to say first of all I have to import that namespace like this using practical demo dot models okay and then after what you will see at the rate model login view model then you do model declaration to get a intelligence okay so instead of writing this part in each and every view what we can do there is one web.config file in your views folder okay it contains the views configuration details common configuration details so what you can do you can specify that namespace here so let us say add namespace is equal to practical demo dot models okay now as I told you we are going to devil uh, you we are going to apply the bootstrap classes and as well as we are going to use the strongly type HTML helpers here so let us create a form and our input tags using strongly type HTML helper before this let me comment this part okay so currently it is showing an error here so what we can do just close your view and reopen it again okay see now this error goes hmm? now at the rate using HTML dot begin form so here we are going to uh, create a horizontal form and by default um, when we do not apply any class bootstrap class to our form it is by default vertical form okay and since we are going to create a horizontal form and here we are using HTML helpers so we have to use this 8 overload this one okay so here we have to specify the action name where we want to post we want to post to login action then controller name is account okay then my method is post and here I can specify my CSS class so at the rate class is equal to form dash horizontal okay then there will be opening curly bracket so we have to divide our form in three part first one is for label then our input tag and then after our validation part okay so let us create one div so div apply the CSS class form dash group okay then let us create a label using HTML helper label for so m goes to m dot username now apply the CSS class for horizontal form your label will have two classes one is control dash label and another one is grid class that is call dash sm dash 3 ok then after I will create a text box using html dot text box for say m goes to m dot 
username then apply the css class the red class is equal to form uh, form dash control and then grid system classes say sm dash 5 okay then last one is validation summary uh, validation message so html dot validation message for so m goes to m dot username and here also we are going we are not going to specify the validation message so i'll keep this part blank because because we already specified while defining the validation attribute in our model and then after the css class okay so here i have to just apply the grid class so how many spaces are left four spaces are left so i'll assign it to validation part so call dot call dash sm dash 4 so total addition should be what it should be 12 okay now let us copy this part here i have to just use password okay and here also instead of text box what i have to say password for okay now the next is input type uh, submit button so let us wrap it in div so form dash group then after here you can use input type is equal to submit okay so what you can do here you can create your own helper okay and for submit button and use that helper here so you will have in practice of custom html helper okay so do it yourself currently i am using a plain html tag so value is equal to login let me apply the class class is equal to btn btn dash primary okay so we design this form using bootstrap now in the same way what i have to do i have to design this personal form and marks form for this we are going to use a plain vertical form we are not going to add the complexity of a horizontal form okay now what will i do i'll create it and then we will continue okay now as you can see here i designed all the two forms that is for accepting the personal details and for accepting the marks now here in your login view what you can see the message is displayed in span tag if the credentials are invalid so what we are going to do we are going to display it in our validation summary so let us create it so html dot validation summary okay and i am not going to show the property level messages in the validation summary so pass true value to it okay so we are we are using this overload okay so if we set it to true what it means exclude the property errors now same thing i want to specify in rest of the two forms also so for marks view and for personal view okay now one thing is left that we want to apply the client side validation also and for client side validation what we have to do actually we specified the data annotation client side validation works on the same principle just we have to add the required js file and for that we are going to apply going to install it using nuget package manager so go to tools menu nuget package manager and package manager console okay so install that package here so what we have to say install dash package microsoft dot jquery dot unobtrusive save dot validation okay so hit a enter key so this will add the required js file now you can check it in your script folder look at here validate file and minified validate file as well as unobtrusive file get added now since all our forms all our views required a validation so what will i do i'll add a reference of these two files in our layout view so let us go to shared folder and in layout view 
I add the reference of this file. Now here sequence is very important. First of all, you should add a reference of jQuery file, then your validate file, and then after your unobtrusive validation file. Okay, you can add minified version also. Okay, now we're done with this part. Now what will we do? We first of all will run the application. We will check whether this validation works or not. Okay, so let us run it. and we will check a design of our ui how our bootstrap classes get applied okay look at here now here what happened we should give a offset here okay so let us give it so let me switch to login view so i have to give a offset of 4 because we want to align it along with our text boxes okay and label is acquiring the three column spaces so let us give a offset of three columns so call dash sm dash offset of three okay now let us refresh this and let us check whether validation rules are applied or not see client side validation is working perfectly your page is not submit submitting but just one uh, problem is there we want this validation error messages in red color so what we have to do if you inspect this part okay it is in one span tag okay and to this span tag this field dash validation dot dash error class get applied so what we have to do we have to write this class in our CSS and we have to specify the formatting. So let us define this class. So let us go to our contain folder and there is one site.css file where we can define our own CSS. So let me define the color red. Okay. And when our data is valid, what we want to do? See. Okay. Let me enter five digit or five character long password so when our data is valid at that time look at here which class get applied field dash validation dash valid so we have to specify the css for this also because since we are not using complicated css quite easy one so it do not affect our design but if you are working with a complicated design in that case it is necessary to define this class so whenever there is no error it should not display anything so let me define this class also so here i'll say display block okay now let us check the other parts also so say student slash personal details okay, let me refresh this look at here Okay, here also bootstrap classes get applied as well as your error message also get displayed. So let us refresh this part so we can get an error message in red color. Okay, still it is not showing. Okay, but as you can see the error messages are working. Similarly, let us check the next form also which is mark details. So it is also working. Now if I entered the character, then it is showing me that invalid marks. If I entered digit, then only it will work properly. If I enter four digit, then also it will show you the invalid marks because we specified the regular expression for three digit, one to three digit, as you can see here in your marks view model. Look at here. This is our regular expression. Okay. Now what extra things you have to do? you will create a custom html helper for this submit button this is the extra thing that we have to do and next you have to create a custom validator that will check whether your mark is in the range of 0 to 100 or not means your maximum limit should be 100 if anybody enters the value above the above 100 okay in that case it should fire an error Okay, I hope you can solve this. Refer the previous videos for your 
uh, refer the previous videos okay and from that try to create it and share your code in a comment section and now what will I do I'll create a second part of this practical demonstration and there we saw a complex model we, the, then we'll see the complex model binding in that video so thank you